Hey, what's happening, guys? We are back today with our dear old friend, the 555 timer. Guess I should have wrote that here, huh? Now, this 555 timer is set up in your standard uh, A stable multi vibrator mode. Pin 8, our VCC, is connected directly to our VCC. We have a resistor between VCC and pin 7. We have a resistor between pin 7 and 6. Pin 6 also goes around to pin 2. And it has a capacitor, our main timing capacitor, going to ground. Pin 5, I believe it's called the con control pin, I think. I have to look that up. Anyway, it just has a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And that is wrong. That is actually going to ground. My bad on that. Okay, pin four. I don't know why I didn't even draw a pin four here. Man, I'm having a good day. Pin four, a reset pin is held high. Pin three is our output. It has an LED on it. Pin two goes to uh, pin six. And pin one is ground, which goes directly to ground. And what you see here with these values here, uh, resistors one and two are timing resistors are each 1K. Resistor three here is a 330 uh, ohm resistor just to control the current on that diode. Our timing capacitor C1 is 100 microfarad. And C2 on that control is just a bypass resistor 0.1 microfarad. And you see we're getting, well, why guess? Let's read it. We can check our uh, our frequency here. Now, the one thing I want to talk about is that because both of these resistors are the same, we are going to end up with a duty cycle here, 0.66, which is, if you follow uh, electronics and capacitors at all, then you know that that 0.66 is about two-thirds of the charge of the capacitor, which is one timing cycle, the T, in our formula. So anyway, there we are at 4 hertz, which I actually find hard to believe. But anyway, the important thing I wanted to show you is the duty cycle here, which is 0.663. Now, we can change the duty cycle of the 555 timer by changing the ratio of those resistors. But that's kind of a hardwired thing and it can be a pain in the butt to do. Also it's going to have some effect on the frequency and a whole lot of things like that. So what this video is more about than talking about the 555 timer, which I can do for days, is to talk about this circuit here which allows us to control the duty cycle of our 555 timer. So let me get that out of there. Now here is our standard A-stable multivibrator profile, which you just looked at. Now if we flip it over like this, there's another mistake. Man. I should go back to bed and just start over again tomorrow. But no, you guys get the idea. Anyway, all we've done here is if you look, we've added two diodes. And by adding those two diodes, we don't allow the recharge to come back and access our one timing capacitor here. So, so basically what happens is we've in the standard A-stable multivibrator, we create a voltage divider right here. And it is the function of these two resistors which controls the charge time of our timing capacitor down here. What we've done here is we've broken them apart with those diodes so that they can no longer interact in both ways. They can only interact in one way. So what we now have is this resistor controlling the charge time and this resistor and variable resistor here 
controlling the discharge time. So if I power this up, I know you can't see any change there. Well, I guess you can kind of see it flickering. Let me find a uh, screwdriver. Screwdriver. Where's my screwdriver? One moment, please. Screwdriver located after many moments. But anyway, by adjusting this, that look like it got brighter to you? And dimmer. By adjusting this, we can control the duty cycle of our timer now. So what we've kind of made here is like almost a uh, a little PWM circuit, right? Let me find a spot to clip on here. Okay. So our frequency is 281 hertz, which is of course too fast for your eye to see. And our duty cycle is 12.4%. And then by adjusting this, I can take it up to 18%, which looks kind of bright to you, or I can drop it down to 2.4%, which looks kind of dim. So what we've done basically here is, yeah, we've created kind of a little PWM generator. But if we change our timing capacitor, and this one is, uh, I think, point, or 63 puff, I believe. Let me see what else we got here. That's 100. I don't want 100. I want 10. Luckily, I say luckily, we have many, many. Now, just in case you were wondering about that circuit that's just kind of floating there right now, yes, it is still oscillating. There is enough capacitance in the breadboard alone to allow that circuit to oscillate. Should be around 300 kilohertz, I believe. 266.1 kilohertz. Well, that's close enough for government work. Anyway, all right. Here's a uh, here's a 10 microfarad. This should change the look of this circuit significantly. There we go. See how much that's changed? Here's another one. This is a. Uh, I think this is. I think this is one microfarad. You get that bad boy in there. Could be ten, huh? Okay, this might give us a better idea of our duty cycle. Okay, notice how long that's on compared to off. And then if we reverse it, we end up with more of a pulse generator. So yeah, you could use that to create yourself a little bit of a pulse generator. But I guess the point that I was trying to make today, if, if I was actually making any point whatsoever, is that by using these diodes here, what we're doing is simply isolating the charge and discharge resistors from each other so that one controls the charge time, 
the other controls the discharge time. And then we can control the duty cycle by manipulating their values. Whereas when you do it with the standard model, which is basically the same thing here, it, you, but you have these two, two resistors interacting together. Does that make any sense to you guys? If it does, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share and uh, leave a comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. That's it. Don't forget to subscribe. Whew. Wow, it's a rough morning. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Big thanks to the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.